Right, we're on backswing chaos. That's what we're going to clean up today. Is your backswing chaotic? That doesn't sound good at all, does it? <laughs> if you look up the dictionary and you look up the word chaos, complete disorder and confusion is what you'll read. And that's the last thing you want with your backswing. You have to have a controlled backswing, an organised backswing in which you're able to assemble all sorts of pieces in, in one motion. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to gently split the backswing into four motions or from four motions into two motions and then into one motion. So making the backswing, this chaotic backswing that you already have, into one pure motion. Just one simple backswing motion. Let's start, shall we? So complete disorder and confusion. Complete disorder and confusion as you take the golf club back. Now that's obviously not a good thing at all. We want, to avoid, we want to avoid that as much as possible. We're going to talk about this today. We're going to take four parts of the backswing, create two parts of the backswing from that, and then from there, we'll dilute that even more and make it one fluid motion, so one simple backswing motion. Before we start, please consider subscribing to my channel. Just click the little button down there. It's free of charge. Also, the bell notification just left of that button. That will give you instant notification of all my videos as they come live. Let's carry on. So downswing blackout, that's actually a thing. People blacking out on the downswing, not really sure what's happening, just a complete blur, an absolute <sighs> scramble. We don't want that on the backswing. We're obviously taking the club back to structured position, so therefore the downswing can be more uniform or more productive, let's say. So what happens in the backswing? Let's think about these four moves. First two moves, the arms go backwards. So what makes the arms go backwards? Not outwards, not inwards, not upwards, backwards, away from the golf ball. Now that is created by the turning of the shoulders or the lats, but we'll use shoulders today to make it as simple as possible. So when the club goes back, the arms turn away from the golf ball through a rotation of the shoulders. So one, moving the shoulders turns the arms. Moving the shoulders turns the arms. As that happens, the right elbow folds. As that happens, as the shoulders turn the arms, the right elbow folds in this action. It doesn't pull away with the elbow first. The hand passes the shoulder, sorry, the elbow. So the shoulders turn the arms. As that happens, the right elbow folds. Right elbow folds into this position here. Shoulders turn the arms away from the golf ball, right elbow folds. So there's two motions. The shoulders turning the arms is one motion. And the right elbow folding as a byproduct of this, not a pulling of the arms with the right elbow, that's very different. Right elbow folds. That there's a fold, that's been a pull. If I were to follow through with a chicken wing, for example, you've pulled the left elbow through instead of a fold. See the difference there? Same on the way back. Fold, that's a pull. There. Shoulders, turn the arms away, right elbow folds. That's two motions, but we have to create them into one. So try and feel that as one motion. It's less chaotic when we can make it in as few moves as possible. So try and understand that this triggers this, which triggers this, which triggers this. So then therefore it's evolution, it's happening. It's actually happening and evolving as opposed to us trying to piece things together or having absolutely no concept of what we're trying to do at all. So all I'm doing here now is I'm going to turn my shoulders, which of course the byproduct will make the arms move, and my right elbow is going to fold. Turn shoulders, right elbow fold. So that all becomes one motion. Good. Elbows, right elbow folds as the shoulders turn. So there's two motions, which are now one. There. Next two motions that we have to think about is we need to be structured at the top. It's all very well having the shoulders turn the arms away from the golf ball and the right elbow to fold. But if we move away from the golf ball, we're going to struggle to get back to the golf ball to get pure contact. In fact, we won't get back to the golf ball if this right foot, right knee goes outside the right foot. So the next motion now is getting that right knee braced in there. If we can brace the right knee in, in a purposeful way, in which we can get the upper body to work as well, then we're much more centred over the golf ball with a focused backswing. Oh, that sounds brilliant. Much more centred with a focused backswing that's evolving as we go. Dress position. Good. Now the shoulders are going to move the arms away and the right elbow tucks itself in, folds in. Boom. Brilliant. Right knee, I'm going to push towards the left knee at address. 
So the dress position, I'm just going to tuck the right knee in slightly. There we go. So now I feel as though there's more pressure on the instep of my right foot. More pressure in here as I take the club back. Normal dress position, right knee tucked in slightly. Shoulders turn the arms, right elbow folds, right knee stays tucked in. Now I'm centered over where I want to be for the golf ball. The byproduct of that as well is the upper body starts to work. I start to get some left bend in here. That is left bend. So when I tuck the right, elbow, the right knee in, there, I can feel how I've crunched in here. This is crunched in the way, this is extended. So we've got extension here. This here we've crunched in slightly, that's the feeling, as a byproduct of the right knee staying where it should be good, which has allowed me to maintain my spine angle. Address spine angle is here. I'm able to maintain that because the right knee, shoulders turn, arms, elbow, there. So I've maintained that. I can feel how this is contracted and how the right side has expanded. And then from there, I'm good to re-deliver the golf club back to the golf ball. Now sure, that sounds like a lot of motions, but it's four things that we're going to put into two things. So shoulders turning the arms away from the golf ball and the right elbow folds, two things. Right knee tucked in. I'm feeling the crunch on the left side. Another two things. Four moves into two. So that's four moves into two. Shoulders, right elbow folds. One motion. One motion. One motion. Right knee in, left side contracts, or right knee in, right side extends, you choose. One more motion. Here it's there. Now I put that together. Shoulder, right elbow, right knee, left side. One motion. One motion. Structure. The club will only go back one way now. The club cannot come out this way because the shoulders aren't turning. The shoulders are turning, which puts the arms away from the golf ball. The right elbow folds, which sets the club on a good plane. Right knee tucked in, so I'm able to maintain my spine angle. Then from there, I can now accelerate back towards the golf ball from this stored power on the inside of the right foot. Four motions into two. Let's make it all one now. A one simple thought backswing. Love that. And you're thinking, but it's still four motions, Steve. Well, it is four motions, but the chaos is gone because we know what we're trying to do. It's less chaotic. Here I go. Shoulders, right elbow. That's the top half. Bottom half, right knee stays tucked in. The byproduct is that will crunch without even having to worry about that. Good. Shoulders and right elbow, right knee. Turn. There. All one motion. I can feel everything happening at once there. It's all good stuff. It's all great stuff. <laughs> And of course, it does relate back to four motions and you can break them all down and work on all four motions or two and two. So two for the top half and two for the bottom half. And work it back and work it back and work it back until it feels like one motion. But what I'm trying to put across here is the chaos is gone. It's structured, it's controlled, it's got a purpose. That's absolutely what we're after in this golf swing. Once we're at the top of the golf swing, this new one piece, if you like, or one action backswing from there, you can just fire back at the golf ball. You've got lots of weight stored on that left side and the right instep of that foot, right foot. You can power back towards this golf ball. You can power back towards this golf ball from the structured top of swing position. There I am. I've got lots of power on the inside of my right foot. That stayed there. I'm starting to transfer to the left there. Good, I can now go back at the golf ball because I've structured my way to the top. Shoulders, right elbow, right knee in. Good, eh? Right, there we go. I'm going to stop right there. Thank you very much for subscribing. I'm sure you clicked that little button earlier on. If you didn't click that little button earlier on, now's your chance to do it. So I'll give you two seconds to do that. Thank you very much. Remember the bell notification. Well done. Thank you. Let's get this channel up to 100,000 subscribers. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.